You are most welcome, my friends. It's a good feeling to always bring you something. I am Waisu Saddam, and I'm here to talk SST. Are we there? Uh, as usual, I left you with an activity, and we have to first go through the activity. So my friends, get your books, sit upright, concentrate, and we have another lesson. Are we together? Now, I left you with some few numbers, and uh, we have to go through them very quickly. So we are going to read together. Question number one. Who is believed to be the founder of Uganda Kingdom? Who is believed to be the founder of Uganda Kingdom? Now, as I told you, we have two traditions that explain the foundation of Uganda Kingdom. So here we can have Katochimera, or we can have Chintu, any of the two. Question number two. How was Katochimera related to Isingo Mampuga? Do you still remember what we said? These were twin brothers. Are we there? Or you can say Katochimera was a twin brother of Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga. Question number three. Give two factors that led to the growth of Uganda Kingdom. We talked of strong leaders, the likes of, of Kabakamanga. We also talked of uh, strategic location. We also talked Uganda had um, uh, well-trained army or strong army. Then we also talked of fertile soil that supported farming. Also, Uganda were united people. So there are very many reasons here. Question number four. How did the coming of Arabs promote the expansion of Uganda Kingdom? Did Uganda benefit from the coming of Arabs? Of course, yes. And that's what I want you to say here. So now, Uganda acquired guns that they used to expand and defend their kingdom. So for them, by that time, they had superior weapons compared to other communities around them. So my friends, the guns helped Uganda over Uganda to fight their neighbors easily. And then they were able to defend their kingdom. Question number five, and it's the last question. In which way did Lake Victoria contribute to the growth of Uganda kingdom? Okay, we talked about the strategic location. So how did Lake Victoria contribute to the growth of Uganda Kingdom? Oh, the answer is simple. This lake provided a natural defense to the kingdom. So no one would attack the kingdom from the south simply because there was Lake Victoria or a water body. Do I have someone who has passed everything? Oh, wow. You are a genius. Now, if you do not get everything right, my friends, what do you do? Write corrections, then we attend to today's work. Now, friends, what do we have today? Okay, today we are going to learn about other kingdoms, and that is to say, Toro and Ankole kingdom. Do I have Batoro seeing, uh, looking at me? Where are the Banyankore? Today we are going to talk about Ankole kingdom and Toro kingdom. Of course, we shall look at the location, the founders, mm, the factors the, that led to their growth, and the activities that these people got involved in. So my friends, just sit and know that by the end of our lesson, we should have learned much about Toro and Ankole kingdom. Okay, now we shall begin with the Toro kingdom. Toro Kingdom, uh, it was first of all part of Gunyoro Kingdom or the Luo Babito dynasty. You still remember the great rulers of Gunyoro Kingdom? The lakes of Omkama Kavalega, the lakes of Omkama Kamrasi. So this was part of that great kingdom of Uganda. Are we there? So time came and Toro Kingdom broke away from Gunyoro Kingdom. We shall know why that happened. Now, my friends, during the 
uh, the time of the aging Om Kamachewambe, Nyamutukura, his son, called Prince Kaboyo, left the palace and went and started his own kingdom. And that was known as Toro Kingdom. So the son of the aging, which means that the king was aging. The firstborn, the prince, known as Prince, as you can see, Prince Kaboyo, left the palace and started the Toro Kingdom. You know I'm going to tell you more to, as to why he left the palace. Hopefully he did not go when he's a happy man. He went when he's a sad man, okay? Because he had his ambitions, as we are going to know. So my friends, later on, we need to know the title given to the leader of Toro Kingdom is Omkama. So the title did not change from their grand kingdom. Are we there? Or from their father or mother kingdom. That was Bunyoro. So they just came with the title and they retained it as Bunyoro. Now, my friends, we want to know why did the Prince Kaboyo leave his father's palace to start his own kingdom? Okay. Now I have reasons why Toro broke away from Bunyoro kingdom. Why did the Prince Kaboyo decide to leave his father's palace to go and start his own kingdom. Now the first reason is here. First of all, in Bunyoro, we had there the groups of Banyoro. We also had the Batoro there within one kingdom. Now, the Batoro who were living in Bunyoro felt that they were being neglected by Bunyoro king and they were far away from the capital of Bunyoro. These people would take a long time without seeing their kawaka, uh, sorry, their omkama, their king. So they felt they were neglected. Their king, they thought their king never liked them because they would take years, two years, five years, three years without seeing their king. So they thought, now for us this way, we are very far from the capital. Maybe we need to begin our own kingdom. So when the chance came, they welcomed it and they started a kingdom. And that was known as Toro Kingdom. That's one reason why it broke away from Bunyoro. The second reason was Prince Kaboy was very greedy, as in greedy and impatient to become a king. Now you know what would happen? The kings, our, our traditional kings used to have very many children. And remember, one person, one person like this would become the heir. So now there were very many children, and each child wanted to be the next king. Now what these people would do, they would allocate different children to rule different areas, and they would call those ones chiefs of different places. Now Prince Kaboyo had been appointed to be a chief, and remember, when you were appointed to be a chief, your chances of becoming the next king would be now low. Because they would now first consider people who, are, who have not been given to, uh, to rule in place. So now when this man realized that it was a trick, he was knocked out technically, he was appointed to be a chief, he learned that he... He's likely not to be the next Omkama of Bunyoro. And this man really wanted to be the next Omkama. He was so greedy and impatient to be the next king. Now what he did, he said, for God's sake, let me leave Bunyoro and I go and start my own kingdom. And of course, the man became the kingdom. So this ambitious, greed, impatient King, Prince of Munyoro, known as Prince Kaboyo, never waited to replace or to succeed his father. Because, as I told you, his chances had reduced when he was appointed to be a chief. Now he said, let me go far away from the capital and I begin my kingdom. And that was Toro Kingdom. Can I see Batoro waving to me? Very good. Now... Uh, the other reason is the Batoro disliked the rule of the princesses of Bunyoro. 
You know, the princesses of Bunyoro were given some part to control. And that part was Toro, the Toro part. So these beautiful princesses disrespected people who are living in Toro. So these people never liked their rule. They never liked the way they were being led by the princesses of Toro. So when the chance came, they just grabbed it. Are we there? And those are the three reasons to why Toro broke away from Bunyoro Kingdom. Are we together, friends? And uh, uh, we, were, we have to continue. What were the activities the Batoro carried out? Now, my friends, the Batoro, mainly did pastoralism and then crop growing. Some of them were grazing animals and others were carrying out cultivation. So uh, I find a problem with the spelling of the word pastoralism and we have to spell it together. Pastoralism, P-A-S-T-O-R-A-L-I-S-M. Now, if you want to get this word correct, there must be the word pastor. So you write pastor, then you can continue allism, pastoralism. You will get the correct spelling of the word pastoralism. Because most of us normally skip uh, some letter R. Now, my friends, I have a list of some of the rulers of Toro Kingdom. And of course, I'm going to begin with uh, Prince Kaboy the first. There are also other Kaboyos. That's why I'm saying the first. We also have Omkama Kashagama. We also have Rukidi the second. Okay? We also had Olim, Olim Kaboyo. And I have not brought all of them, but I've picked just a few. And the current Omkama of Toro Kingdom is His Majesty. Oyo, Nyimba, Kabamba, Igru, Rukidi the fourth is the current king, it's the current Omkama of Toro Kingdom. And here is the gentleman. This is how he looks like. He's a very nice person. And he's the current Omkama of Toro Kingdom. His Majesty, Oyo, Nyimba, uh, His Majesty, Oyo, Nyimba, Kawamba, Iguru, Rukidi, the fourth is the current Omkama or King of Toro Kingdom. Now it's headquarters is located in Fort Poro, and I know most of you have seen that beautiful palace. Are we there? So, friends, we also have to remember about. Omkama Kasagama. This Omkama was the king of Toro by the time the white, the white man came to Uganda. And he welcomed actually some of the white men. So he was a collaborator. He was one of the uh, traditional rulers who collaborated with the white man, who brought, who supported the ruling of the white man. Now, reason is why Omkama Kasagama of Toro welcomed Captain Frederick Lugard. Remember, when Toro broke away from Bunyoro, it means that it meant that there was some misunderstandings that happened in the kingdom, and the father, the father of Prince Kaboyo, never liked it. It was a bad act, so they had to always. They, I mean, they had to fight uh, to, to bring back this kingdom or this Toro to be part of Munyoro. They kept fighting the Batoro or the people who were living in Toro Kingdom so that they would bring that part back to Bunyoro. So now, during the time of Omukama Kasagama, he was fought and defeated. So he was driven away from his kingdom of Toro. Now when a white man called Captain Frederick Lugard came to Uganda around, uh, 19, around 18, around 18, uh, 18, sorry, around 1889, 
when he came to when he came to Uganda, this man, this uh, the Omukama of Toro by then, Omukama Kasagama, welcomed him. Why did he welcome him? One, he wanted to be restored to his throne, as he had been defeated by the Omukama of Bunyoro. So when this white man came here, he welcomed him because he wanted to be restored back on his throne. Are we there? Then the other reason was he wanted protection against his enemies and mainly the Banyoro or the resistance from Banyoro kingdom. And these are the reasons to why Omkama Kasagama of Banyoro collaborated or, uh, in, or welcomed Captain Frederick Rugard in 1889. Okay, in 1889. Now, friends, uh, we can continue. How did Omukama Kasagama benefit from the coming of Captain Frederick Rugard? Remember, Captain Frederick Rugard was the representative of Aideko. So he restored him to his throne. Then he got protected against Omukama Kavalega. So Omukama Kavalega was the Omukama of Bunyoro by that time, who fought so hard to bring Toro back to Bunyoro. Are we there, friends? So that can be a brief background of, of Toro Kingdom. And we have to talk about Angola Kingdom very fast. Angola Kingdom is also a kingdom found in Uganda. It is in, located in southwestern part of Uganda. Are we there? It's no longer uh, active. It did not restore in 1993 when the president of Uganda restored kingdoms for several reasons. Are we there? But the rest of the kingdoms we have been talking about in Uganda, they are still in existence. Now, Angola Kingdom was formed in southwestern Uganda, that is its location, and it was founded by a gentleman known as Ruhinda Nyavugaro, known as Ruhinda Nyavugaro. He was the founder of uh, Ankole Kingdom around the 15th century. Okay? And it started from the present day Rampara and was called Karo Karunji. When I say Karo Karunji, you get what I mean? A beautiful land. Are we there? So before it was called Ankole, it was known as Karo Karunji, Karo Karunji, which means a beautiful land. Are we there? Now, it traces the, its origin of the period of the Batembuzi. That means that its origin is also a myth, or it's not very clear. Are we there? Then, British colonialists added other principalities together to form the uh, a kingdom by then, Ankole Kingdom. So it started, as I've told you, from Rampara, and by that time it was called Karo Karunji, and it was founded by Rohinda Nyavgaro. Are we there? Then we want to see which principalities we added to, Kar to Rampara or to Karo Karunji to form the Ankole Kingdom. The principalities of, of, of Buhweju, we have Mpororo, we have Igara, we have Kajara, we have Vanyaruguru, all of these principalities were put together to form Ankole Kingdom. Are we there, friends? And now it then got its new name, Ankole Kingdom. But remember, before it was called Ankole, it was known as uh, the beautiful place, the beautiful land, Karo Karunji. Are we there? And its king was called Omugabe. Why I'm saying was, 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 this kingdom no longer exists in Uganda. Are we there? So Omugabe was the title given to the king of Ankole kingdom. Now, what did the Banyankore, uh, which activities did the Banyankore got involved in? One was pastoralism. They used to keep animals, then iron smelting. Then they also did carpentry, pottery, and farming. Remember, these communities started trading with others through the exchange of what they used to make. 
Are we there? And now we have to be a little fast. I have brought some examples of the kings of Ankole. And the first one, of course, is Ruhinda Nyabugaro, who was the founder of this beautiful place or kingdom. Uh, we also have Kahaya, we have Gashonga, and we have Ntare. Ntare was a famous Omugabe of Ankole because he was also a collaborator. He also welcomed the white people or the British into his kingdom. And when we talk of those traditional rulers who collaborated with the British, don't always forget to say Omugabe Ntare of Bunyoro, then Om Omukama Kasagama, and so many others. So they contributed to the loss of our independence. But they had reasons to why they did that. Like they wanted protection against their enemies, and some of them wanted to be restored. Now, my friends, I hope you have enjoyed this lesson about Toro and Karo Karonji. Or you can say, and Ankole Kingdom. I have designed for you some five numbers that I hope you can do well. And we, I want to say thank you for being good children. Stay home, stay safe. We meet in the next lesson. Bye-bye.